what is up everyone i'm so excited to try some new makeup today with you guys i just got back from the grocery store and it's meyer if you live in the midwest so it's a superstore and i went over to the beauty section they always have all the new launches so some of these i have literally not seen anywhere i haven't heard anyone talk about um this revlon colorstay lock line there's quite a few or i should say like their blot their lock there's a couple things and then uh, new mascara, some skincare. We're just gonna be trying a, a mix of things today. So cheers to that. And I've already got my, well, I say that, a wintry mug out even though it's fall, but I use this year round. So that's the truth. <laughs> first things first, CoverGirl launched a little while ago a clean, fresh skincare line. And I've mentioned this before. I feel like anytime a drugstore, no, not even drugstore, anytime a makeup brand launches skincare i'm usually kind of like did we need this from you like we have plenty of other brands like skincare brands that are doing this and at similar price points like why do i need covergirl to make my skincare no shade no hate i'm just saying a lot of times i don't trust it and I, that's just me i don't know anyone else feel the same way however i have been pleasantly surprised like i've been pleasantly surprised by a lot of elf's skincare so i was like okay we're gonna try something from this covergirl line so i picked out their dry skin corrector cream they had a, a range of moisturizers this was the one for normal to dry skin i was looking at their kind of like more weightless gel cream but i mean honestly i have been battling some dry skin so i figured this is probably a good idea i mentioned in a vlog recently if you are battling dry skin right now um, and for you, it's not like a constant thing. I do have a few tips and tricks and a few product recommendations that I've really gotten rid of a lot of the dry patches that I had and I got rid of them in really just a few days. So if you're interested to kind of hear some of that, I'll link that vlog. Let's give this a whirl because I'm very, very curious about how it uh, looks. Also, it is a very rainy fall day here. It is so, it looks brighter on camera, thank goodness, because I just use natural light when I'm filming here and it is so, so dark, but it's it's a good rain. It's a good rainy day. Like the candle is the correct vibe for this day. <laughs> Ooh. So it's in plastic packaging. Please don't have a scent. Hmm. It, it, I don't think it has a scent scent. It does smell a little bit fresh, but not in like an overpowering way. Like I can't tell if they actually added anything or not. So this is what it looks like up close. So it's not anywhere near as like thick of a cream as I thought it would be. But, you know, if you are planning to wear this under makeup, you might not want it to be that thick because that would be my other fear. You know, this is for drier skin types. If you put on a nice thick thing, a lot of times it can pill up. Not always. It definitely feels like there's some kind of smell, but it's nothing too overpowering or anything. I definitely have my driest skin in the middle of my forehead and I was dealing with a lot of it like here. I think it's all gone now. Well, it definitely is more lightweight than I expected. So if you are wanting a thicker cream, I don't think this is gonna be the one for you. However, a lot of times, like I said, with makeup application, you don't always want that. So this might be perfect for a lot of people with normal to dry skin. I would say, especially if you have more normal skin, it almost has like a cooling feeling to it. Am I just like making it up in my mind? It does feel slightly cooling. So it says that it's got true clean cactus water hyaluronic acid for 24 hour hydration i think it feels nice we'll see we'll see how it plays with um foundation as well um, my hair is rainy day chic i blow dried it this morning which a lot of times i just let my hair air dry but i showered in the morning so i blow dried it and this is it like i didn't end up styling it at all i don't think it looks terrible but you can see where i had it in a ponytail <laughs> But I'm like, the second I style it, we're going to Costco here in a bit too. This is a big, big grocery day. And the second I go out in the raid, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'll just pull it back in a little bun. But anyway, so that's what we've got today. All right, so I'm just going to throw on my foundation and concealer. I was going to not show it, but I guess I can kind of quickly show some of it. This, I'm still trying out the Glossier foundation. So many people are like, oh my gosh, I love it. I don't know that I love it. I did a first impressions of this and some other Sephora-like products. I don't think this is bad. Like there are definitely foundations I've tried that I'm like, nope, never in a million years, this is awful. I don't know that I love it as much as other people do, but it does, it, it looks nice. It's actually looking really nice over this foundation. I think part of it was because I was having dry skin issues, that might've been part of why I didn't love it so much because it definitely felt like it kind of accentuated it, like it would break apart on the dry skin and 
you know, it just, it just didn't look good. But I also have learned with this less is more. Like you, I was applying way too much the first times I was using it and it looks a lot better when you use less. And it still has, I think, nice coverage. So not terrible, but I don't know that this is like holy grail status for me, but I'm still testing it out. I could change my tune. Have you guys tried it? What What's your opinion? I have the shade Light 2. And then I'm also still testing out. I know these are not drugstore, I'm fully aware, but I didn't have, buy a new foundation or concealer. I didn't see anything I hadn't tried. So this is the House Labs new concealer I am liking, but again, I'm still deciding how I feel. And this is still one of my favorite concealer brushes. This is the one from Anissa Beauty. I have, they gave me like a percent off code if you wanna check it out. I wanna say it's like 10%, I'll put it below. This brush is like the perfect shape, you know, and size. Like it's not too big, but it's not too small either. Like some concealer brushes are so small that you're like, I can't, it's taken me forever to blend this. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the House Labs concealer does look really nice. All right, quick brows. And then I have a new brow product to use uh, from, who is it from, L'Oreal, I think? Yeah, I don't know who needs to hear this, but for the longest time, I didn't know that you were supposed to like trim your brow hairs. So like I'd be applying color to my brows or whatever. And I would be like, oh, I've got to brush it down because my hairs are just sticking up so far. And you know, a few years back I learned like, oh, you can trim them so that they are generally in the, the size and shape you want, like beyond the obvious tweezing and stuff. And I don't know why that just absolutely blew my mind. And if you get a good pair of eyebrow scissors, you can really, I just recently trimmed them and I feel like they look so much better. So anyway, a little PSA. I know most people probably know that, but it blew my mind when I like had that realization. <laughs> so I typically will go in with a tinted brow gel, but then I love going in with a clear brow gel to get them to stay in place. Speaking of what I was just saying. So this caught my eye from L'Oreal. It's their Longwear Brow top coat. I am sure it's just a clear brow gel. I love though when brands come up with like interesting names, kind of like when Laura Mercier did their tinted moisturizer blush and bronzer, just because it was a little more sheer. I'm like, that was genius marketing because I instantly like needed to try it. <laughs> so I feel like a brow top coat is an interesting name, you know? It's got a really small spoolie. Oh, it is very liquid. That just spilled out everywhere. What is this product? So don't hold it upside down. <laughs> Did you hear that? It was my wet hand wiping it on this towel here, but it did not sound like it. And of course now I'm like, let me recreate the sound so I can prove that it wasn't me and it won't do it. <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay. It says it's universally transparent, waterproof, smudge resistant, transfer proof. This is what it says. Step one, do your makeup with your own product. Two, Seal your brows with long wear top coat. I don't know who wrote that, but that was a weird way to say, like, use your normal brow products. <laughs> but also like, what if you don't use brow products and you just want the clear, it's just weird <laughs> instructions. So, okay, I guess we just brush it through. This is water. Like it feel, you know what I mean? Consistency wise, it feels like water, but this is unique. I have to say, I have never tried a brow product that was literally liquid. I'm just kind of letting it dry. We'll see if it feels crunchy, but that's my thing. You know, I like when my brows look more kempt. I know a lot of people like the more like unruly brow, but I don't like that on me. And so being able to kind of get them the way I want them and hopefully they just stay that way all day is ideal. I feel like more often than not, I look in the mirror at the end of the day and I'm like, yep, my brows are like, <laughs> and I'm sure it's one of those things that like, I would be the only one that would notice, but you know, you drive yourself nuts. All right, well, while we let that kind of dry, it already feels pretty dry. We're gonna use this. Do you guys remember this product? It's from Revlon. It's their like weird cream shadow quad. How do they still sell these? I remember these being terrible back, like genuinely terrible back in the day. I need to cut this open. So I am very curious to try it nowadays when there's even better cream shadows. Maybe they've improved the formula. Maybe they haven't, but we're about to find out. I got the quad called Not Just Nudes, number 710. So when you open it, I was like, oh, it's on that side. Cause it's like legitimately where those are. This is what it looks like. I'm so curious. Oh. It's had a little more uh, kick to it than I expected, like a little more pigment. The darkest one definitely did. Okay, so there are the swatches of them. The lightest one you really can barely see on my 
skin tone. Speaking of that, let's take the lightest one and just kind of like do the upper area with that. Cause if that's something that can kind of like blank it out, kind of the way I do, I use like Mac paint pot and painterly. I'm into it. I've never really found a drugstore dupe that I like. That looks kind of nice. You can see how it, see what I mean? That actually looks really nice. I don't really know what I want to do here. I kind of want to use, I think I'm gonna do this brown, the like medium brown all over and then put a little bit of the shimmer like on top. This brown looks like that Merit single shadow I've used a lot recently. I think it's called Studio or something like that. Very similar look and honestly, you guys, kind of a similar feeling where it's not wildly pigmented and it kind of blends away like even the Merit one, but I like it because for an everyday look, it kind of gives the look I want. But it is not like what you're gonna picture a lot of cream shadows to feel like. This is very thin and I mean, as you're seeing, it doesn't pack a huge punch pigmentation wise. But you know what? If this has been around ever since, you know, 10 years ago or whenever I remember these last, people are buying them, people are using them, they're still making them. So for the right person, I mean, I don't think this looks bad at all, but it is very, very subtle. Let's put a little bit of the shimmer just kinda on top. The shimmer really is not, you know, it's not glittery. It definitely has more of like a satin sheen to it, which I think can look pretty too. A very low key makeup look. Very interesting. It's similar to what I remembered, but it looks a little better once applied than I expected. I feel like that looks really nice. I will put wear notes down in the description box. Like I'll type it out how it looked by the end of the day, how a lot of this looked, because that's going to be the thing because these are cream. Are they going to crease? Like, you know what I mean? That would be the biggest drawback. You might love the way it ends up looking, this really low key look, but they did have other colorways or, you know, whatever you want to call them, other palettes. And they had another nude one, but I feel like it looked even lighter. And I was like, I don't want four shades that aren't going to show up. So yeah, I think it looks nice. Let's do, I just had an idea. Let's take a thinner brush and get that dark color and just kind of, ooh, it's not like the craziest difference, but I think it can look nice. Just interesting, right? Interesting. Do any of you guys use this? Do you remember this? I know some of you guys do. All right, so the brows are dry. Let's just kind of do the test. So that's obviously all in place. So you can definitely still muss it up a little bit, which I feel like is how like any brow gel, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know that this is holding any better than other ones. However, it did just bounce back into place really easily. I'll keep trying it. I don't, you know, and maybe it's a matter of like, here, I'll put on another layer. Like maybe you like really need to coat it. Cause it, it almost has the smell of hairspray. And I'm like, is it kind of like they just put hairspray in a thing and that's why it's so liquid, but it like would actually stay because wait, as I'm saying that out loud, that would be genius. <laughs> I mean, would it be, but like kinda. <laughs> Let me throw on a little bit of liner and then there's a new mascara to try and I cannot wait. Actually, you know what, before we do that, there are two lip products I wanna try. One of them I'm just gonna try now because then I can wipe it off later and we can put on the other one. But this is the Hard Candy Glossotopia Lip Repair Oil. This is not one. This is one I got previously. I didn't buy, they don't sell this at, they don't sell this brand at Meyer. but I've been meaning to try it. The packaging is really cute. The little kind of like rare beauty-esque. Ooh, oh, it smells like candy. This is obviously not gonna have like much color to it, but definitely in a good way, feels like Bonnebel, but really just for nostalgia's sake. Ooh, it feels a lot like a gloss I used to use when I was younger. It's not sticky at all, but it is kind of an odd feeling gloss. It's almost like slippery. I don't know. I don't think it's like anything groundbreaking, but it, you know, if you like the smell, like kind of that Bonnebel lip smacker smell, you're into that. I would give it a try, but I don't know that it's anything groundbreaking. However, I do think my lips look nice. Like I could see this since it's kind of more clear being nice over a lipstick just to kind of Make it look a little juicier. We threw on a little bit of eyeliner. Let's do this new mascara. So this is from Maybelline. This is their The Falsies Surreal Mascara. This is the only one of the things I've tried that I had heard about before, but I haven't actually watched a review, so I don't know if it's good or bad. So I'm really hoping it's good. I love the colors on the packaging, like that periwinkle with the violet, like grapey purple. It's such a pretty color combination to me. Even the mascara itself, look how cute that looks. It's like a different shape. Okay, going back to this gloss, I feel like my lips look really, they don't look as lined. 
It does look kind of nice. Okay, okay, okay. The claims on this one are hybrid fiber technology, fibers of different sizes up to three millimeters, extended helix brush, low, this is written so small, oh my gosh. How old am I? Load slashes from root to tip with dramatic impact. <laughs> Flake resistant, smear resistant, smudge resistant. Yeah, yeah, okay. Formulated with lash carrying oils for a comfortable feel. Okay, suitable for sensitive eyes. We're about to find out. I love, love, love this kind of brush. It is definitely my favorite. Just natural bristles, straight, no gimmicks. Isn't it amazing when you really think about it, how many mascaras exist? And they all do the same thing. I mean, obviously they perform very differently. It, it's kind of funny if you really think about like even just in one brand like Maybelline, they have so many mascaras and they're constantly coming out with new ones. I'm like, at a certain point you've done it all. Like <laughs> how many other ways can we market a mascara? It's just kind of interesting. Okay, this is giving so far a very natural separated look, but it still, I think gives a little bit more volume than some of the mascaras that give that very natural like barely wearing mascara look. This gives a little bit more than that, but it's not one of those mascaras that's diving straight into like volume city. Like there's the Huda Beauty One Coat Wow mascara that, that is one coat wow. Like so much volume, almost too much. So we'll do a second coat once that side dries a little bit. I think it looks nice though. Like don't you feel like it looks pretty? Like it doesn't, it's not clumpy. Let's see what it does with this second. Okay, I don't know that it changed a lot with that. Well, it looks a little more volumized. I'll be curious how this dries out because it feels like a not too wet, not too dry formula, kind of like Goldilocks right in between. I'll be curious how this lasts, but I think that looks nice. It looks like a very wearable curling mascara, but it's it'll give you some volume, but not a crazy amount. And I do feel like it caught little lashes really nicely. So it looks more natural, you know? I don't, I'm trying to think of a better word to describe it, but yeah, I'm, I'm liking the way it looks, okay. But it's different than other mascaras I've been using. So I'm, I'm intrigued to keep using this some more. I'm definitely due for my next like speed reviews or like full on makeup reviews video very soon. We are gonna set our, f well, yeah, we're gonna set our face first. So this, line I haven't heard anything about and I got two products from the line so it's the Revlon color stay which has been around forever but this is their blot matte setting powder there is as far as I understand at least at the store there was just this one shade it's like translucent shade I love when it's got decent packaging thank you drugstore Ooh, just got it on my black jeans of course I did <laughs> so I'm just gonna get some on this bigger brush and then okay so you can see the kind of glow ish on my forehead Oh, wow, definitely smoothed it. Let me get a smaller brush and we'll set like the under eye. My only fear with this is it says it's like translucent, but it definitely has, like a lot of translucent ones are straight up white, which I hate, but this has a little bit of tint to it. My thing is with setting powder is I like for the under eye that is for it to like flatten the area out. And I do feel like it did that. Oh, I almost got this everywhere. Why do I not know how to use setting powder? Okay, it's definitely darkening. Can you see that? it's definitely darkening the concealer area a bit. So I feel like for the rest of the face, that'd be fine, like it's not so obvious, but I don't know, can you see that or am I, I feel like it darkened it a bit, but not so much. I don't feel like it's obvious, but if you're wanting a really bright under eye look, I don't think this would be the one you would want on your under eye because it kind of takes away that bit of brightness, but it definitely evened all of that out. I feel like that looks really nice. I am going to throw on a little bit of bronzer and blush. This is my favorite L'Oreal Lumi Bronze It bronzer. I have loved this for quite a long time, especially if you have fair skin, this like lighter shade, I feel like is so nice. So we were at the grocery store. Well, I was at the grocery store earlier and we've got like, you know, it's the Halloween fall season. We've got all kinds of events and things going on and things we need to buy things for, but um, like food wise, potluck, I wanna say pitchins, and everyone keeps getting like potlucks, whatever. But then on top of it, we just needed like our normal groceries. So it was such a big grocery run and then we still need to go to Costco to get stuff. So we're gonna get the girls from school, do a big old fun family run to Costco and hope that the girls aren't too tired from school, which they will be. <laughs> we'll get through it, but I'm like, that's coming next. And I'm like, yikes, not enough coffee in the world. All right, um, and then I'm gonna throw on my beloved Milani Romantic Rose blush. This is just like top three blushes of all time. I absolutely love it. I have to say the loose or the, yeah, the loose powder. I feel like it's, it looks nice. A lot of times in that area on my skin, it doesn't, 
when I put powder, but I don't feel like it look, what is on my finger? Do I still have moisturizer on that finger? I feel like it, it looks good. I'll be curious how long, how that wears. The other thing I want to try is from that same line, it's the Revlon Colorstay Lock Setting Mist. So I'm trying to remember if I've ever tried a setting mist from Revlon, I'm sure I have. Okay, mister on this is pretty good so far. Oh. Oh, that was plenty. I'm trying to get back into using setting powders for the longest time, like I used them and I really do feel like it makes a difference, but then I've just gotten out of the habit and you know, it's an easy step to cut, but it also doesn't take that long. And I do think certain setting sprays really do work. Okay, y'all, my biggest complaint about most setting sprays is they make your skin too dewy. And I like a nice glow, but a lot of times I've already created the glow I want. So I don't want to put a setting spray on top to make it even dewier. This did not do that at all. You can still see that my skin is matte. Ooh, I am pleasantly surprised. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this gloss off because the last thing I wanna try is this CoverGirl Ultimate Liquid Lip in the shade 130 Wine O'Clock. I think this is gonna be a perfect holiday red. And at the holidays, like I have my NARS one that I love, but I have been looking for a drugstore alternative that shade wise is just that holiday red that's kind of blue tone that makes your teeth look white, like stays in place. So I've tried this Ultimate line before and it stays in place really well, but I've never really found a shade that I just loved. So we're gonna, we're gonna see, I'm, I'm going in without lip liner. So Aaron, hold your breath. This looks like the right kind of red. I'm not sure that my line is perfect. That is exactly a holiday red. You look at that and tell me that doesn't make you think of the holiday. Oh my gosh, it looks so nice. I, did, I only had to dip in this one time and I was able to do the entire lip look. So do I wanna go to Costco in a full red lip is now my thought. <laughs> I don't know. Plus if there's gonna be samples, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, well actually this would probably last just fine through the samples. This looks so pretty, so pretty. So. If you are looking for that, I've tried this formula before, so I already know, like I said, this is a formula that's gonna last a long time. You're gonna wanna reapply it in the center of your lips after a few hours, especially if you're like at a holiday party and you're eating snacks or you're drinking whatever. You're gonna wanna reapply it just to A, kinda almost re-wet it. I would say that for any lipstick or liquid lipstick, but man, this shade is dead on. So if you've been wanting to get that NARS one I've recommended a lot and you, it, it's expensive, I would give this a whirl. I think you are gonna be pleasantly surprised by the look. It makes your teeth look white, yay, yay, yay. I am so excited. I'm so glad I ended up picking this up. So that is everything. I usually at this point will like look through and tell you like, okay, what are my top few? But honestly, we didn't try so many products this time. So it's, it's hard to even rank them. I am very pleasantly surprised by this line. I feel like it's been a long time that I've tried stuff from Revlon that I've been super impressed by and both of these, I kind of was like, maybe it'll be okay. And they were both really nice, especially together. I love the way, like the kind of soft matte look that I've got going on. I'm into it. And then of course this lippy, the brow product, the moisturizer, the, you know, Revlon cream shadows. What else did we try? I'm just gonna keep trying. I, you know, I feel like the creams I will probably use again if they don't crease a lot. Cause I really like the way that looks. I think it's just pretty and we used, all the shades in there, which I think is kind of cool. These two, time will tell. And then I totally forgot the mascara. I really like the way that looks for every day. I think it's just a really becoming look. So yeah, there we go. I, like I said, if you were into makeup reviews and all that kind of stuff, I do these videos a lot. If you are just stumbling upon my channel, I would love if you hit that subscribe button. That means you'll be able to find my videos more easily. I will also link some videos that I think you might be interested in down in my description box or up in that little eye in the corner if you wanna keep watching. And I hope you'll say hey to me over on my Instagram as well. It is at it's Jessica Braun over there. I'm on my stories almost daily, just chatting with you guys. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.